Okay, this is video 1.8 on our series of lessons on how to do algebra. If you haven't already watched the video on simplifying algebraic fractions, it's, it's worthwhile doing that because um, this is going to be quite short because a lot of this work has already been covered. Well, I'm going to start off by writing x over 2. And what I want you to do is just pause the video in a second and write down as many different ways as you can of writing x divided by 2. There's other ways of representing the same thing. Okay, well, you may, hopefully, you've written x divided by 2, because they are the same. But the one you may might not have written was half of x. If that was 10 and you divided by 10 by 2, Another way of thinking about that is saying, well, that's a half of 10. And quite a lot in, in, in mathematics, you might see a teacher um, just go from that form to that form without really explaining it. But they're the same thing. Finding a half of a number is the same as dividing that number by 2. And that really leads us to the idea of what you do with algebraic fractions. If you wrote x as a fraction, well, that would be x over 1. And if you found a half of that, that's a half of x over 1. Well, we know that a half of x is x over 2. So you can see what we've done here to get that answer is multiplied the numerator by the numerator and the denominator by the denominator. Now, that's something you're taught when you're doing multiplying fractions from quite an early age. Okay, so what we've got to remember that when we're doing fractions, when we're multiplying fractions, you multiply the top number by the top number, the numerator by the numerator, and the denominator by the denominator. But in algebra, we don't need to write the, the multiply symbol, so we can write that as AC over BD. And that's really it. That's all you have to really concern yourself with, except for when you have the question, you should try and simplify the answer at the end. But there is a way that you can make questions easier. If I started with 4 thirds multiplied by 9 halves, I can write that as 4 times by 9 over 3 times by 2. Now, before we do 4 nines are 36 and 3 twos are 6 and then cancel it from there, which is entirely possible. Let's look if we can cancel anything now. Now, when we cancel, we look for a common factor in the numerator and the denominator. Well, if we wrote this out again as 2 times by 2 times by 3 times by 3, and we wrote the um, denominator out again as 2 times by 3, we can say, well, we can cancel a 2 there and a 3 there, because 2 divided by 2 is 1, 2 divided by 2 is 1, 3 divided by 3 is 1, and 3 divided by 3 is 1. Now, as I said, at this point, it might be worth going to watch the video, the previous video on simplifying algebraic fractions, where this is dealt with in a lot more detail. And then you're left with 1 times by 2 times by 1 times by 3, which is 6, over 1 times by 1, which is 1. So the answer is 6. So when you're given a fraction, even in this form, you can see if you can simplify it before you do the question before you actually do the multiplication. Because often, simplifying the question, and this only works with multiplication, um, because only multiplication, you just multiply the numerator and the denominator. So always worthwhile looking at seeing if you can cancel the question. So I would have looked at this question and said, well, this 4 and this 2, well, 2 divided by 2 gives 1, and 4 divided by 2 gives 2. So I've now made it 2 thirds times by 9. But also, I could have said, well, 3 divided by 3 is 1, and 9 divided by 3 is 1. So I get 2 3 is 6. 1 times by 1 is 1. So I get 6 over 1 again. So we're going to use the same idea when we're doing algebraic fractions. Always look to see if anything will cancel in the question, because it's much easier than cancelling the answer in most cases. So here's an example. a squared b times by b squared over a. Now, we could write that as a squared b squared over ab, 
and then cancel the fraction down by looking for common factors well the common factor is a and AB so we can divide the top and bottom by AB and get AB over 1 or AB and again watch the video on simplifying algebraic fractions if that was a bit quick but we could have also cancelled the question so we could have said well that B is a common factor hit between these two there has to be a common factor above and below in the numerator or a denominator pair so a numerator and denominator pair well that B there is a common factor between that B and that B squared which is B so I can cancel that dividing by B to get 1 and I can divide B squared by B to get B and A divided by A gives 1 and A squared divided by A gives A so I'm left with A lots of B over 1 lots of 1 which is AB again same answer So now it's just a case of how difficult the questions can become. So x squared plus y over 2a lots of um, 3a squared over x plus y. Now you can just multiply top by top, bottom by bottom at this stage, but you might want to see if anything cancels. Now don't don't cancel this incorrectly. The only thing that the the only pair that they have in common here is the a there, look, the a and the a squared there. So we can divide this a by 1 to get 2 times by 1 on the bottom, and we can divide this a, 3a squared by um, a, and you'd get an a there. Now I'm going to scrub that 2 out there because I could have written a up there, or a to the power of 1. Now you might be led into the idea that this x and this x can cancel but they can't because this numerator is x squared plus y and this denominator is x plus y so these two aren't the same and again the whole video on that if you don't understand why you can't cancel those so that leaves us with 3a x squared plus y over 2x plus y and that's as far as it can go you can multiply the brackets out but we, in fractions we try and leave things um, factorised because it's just simpler but you could have written that as 3ax squared plus 3ay over 2x plus 2y okay. mathematically they're the same ok here's one for you to do I put this into a bracket here, but it didn't need to be in a bracket, but I'm just trying to help you there. Right, well, if you haven't already paused the video and done it, I suggest you do it because I'm about to show you the answer. Now, you can do the following. You can say, well, that's 3y squared lots of x squared minus 4x over 6y lots of x minus 4. And then you could say, well, let's multiply out the bracket. So you get x squared minus 12xy squared over 6yx minus 24y. And that is the same as answer as that. It just looks a lot more complicated. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to simplify answers where possible, not complicate them. So rather than multiplying the brackets out, what we should have done at this point is thought, is there a common factor. Can we factorise? Is there a common factor that, that we can simplify that fraction? Well, looking at it straight away, you can see well there's a y squared there and a y there. So the y squared and the y can cancel. So that the y divided by the y, if I write it out again, you could have said well there's a y here y lots of one or y lots of that bracket and there's a y squared lots of that bracket which is y lots of y so we can divide top and bottom by y you could have also said well that there's a three times by two there and a three times by one there so we can divide top and bottom by th three and you might have simplified the answer down to y over x squared minus four x 
over two lots of x minus four. And if you've got that far, then you've done well. But there's something else might be able to simplify. It might simplify even further. So what you've got to look at now is you look at that bracket in the numerator and think, well, can that factorize? And y yep, it can because it has a common factor of x. So we take the x outside the bracket. So I've factored out the x, so x times by x makes the x squared, and x times by negative 4 makes negative 4x. And now we look to see if there's any common factor in the numerator and the denominator, which is x minus 4. So I can divide the top by x minus 4, I can divide the bottom by x minus 4, and I'm left with xy or yx over 2, which is a very different looking answer to this answer here. So this is cancelled, so this is this is the simplest answer. It's a little bit like saying 100 over 50 and 2 over 1 or 2. These, This is the same as these, but this is the simplest form. Okay, now, looking at that question, if you left it like that, you would have got some marks on the exam, but if this was a you know, a question where you had to solve something afterwards, it would be much easier to work from this form. And this is the form they're probably looking for in the f to get the four marks in the exam. Now, looking back at that question though, starting that question again, you could have looked to see if anything cancelled in the question. Remember, cancelling in the question makes the answer easier straight away. So. You could have said, well, hang on, there's a 3 and a 6 there, so there's a common factor of 3. So th 3 divided by 3 is 1, so we've got 1y one squared, and three divided by th um, 6 divided by 3 is 2, so we've got 2y. You could have then said, yep, y squared and a y is a common factor of y, so that bec can become y divided by y is 1, and y squared divided by y is y. So we've got two lots of 1 and one lot of y. So the question has now become and if you multiplied at that point at least the answer would be simpler than the answer you would have got without simplifying these two. But before we do that we, we know that that, that numerator also um, factorizes so we can factorize that to that. And then you could think, well, is there a common factor in the numerator and dom not denominator? Yes, there is. It's the number x minus 4. And please watch that other video yeah. if this is, is going too quick. So x, divide the top by x minus 4 to get 1. Divide the bottom by x minus 4 to get 1. And you're left with x lots of y and divided by 2 lots of 1. So you can see that if you cancel the question down, you get a simplified answer. But if you don't, you can always multiply the, um, the more complicated question together and then simplify the answer. So that's multiplying fractions, algebraic fractions. It's the same as multiplying um, what you would call normal fractions, but you multiply the numerator by the numerator and the denominator by the denominator. But it's always worth looking to see if the question will cancel first, um, rather than trying to simplify the answer, which can be look a mo lot more complicated. OK, here are your four questions to try. So pause the video. If you haven't already done those questions, do them now because I'm about to go through the answers and you'll get the most value if you try them at least because then you'll understand what I'm doing. So let's start with question one, nice and straightforward. Nothing cancels in the numerator, so it's simply the numerator and the denominator size, so it's just simply the a times by x and b times by y. So that's the answer. Okay, now question two. We look, is there a common factor in either the pairs of numerator denominators? And you can see that there's a common factor of x. So we can divide the this numerator by x 
to give us 1x and this numerator by x to give us 1. And again, you can look at and see that there's a common factor of b, so we can divide this denominator by b to give us 1, and this numerator by b to give us 1b. So you're left with xb over 2 times by 2, which is 4. Okay, let's try question 3 then. Now, you could multiply the numerator and the numerator and the denominator and the denominator, but you'll get quite an complicated fraction that you would then have to cancel down. So it's always worthwhile seeing if you can cancel the question. Now at the moment it looks like something can be done, but let's make sure of it by factorising each, if possible, factorising each of the numerators and denominators in the original question. So this numerator here will factorise to x lots of x minus 3. The denominator is as simple as can be. And this um, um, numerator here will factorise to y lots of y minus 1 and this denominator is as simple as it can be. So now we can look for common factors in a numerator and denominator and see if they cancel. Well, this x and this x, there's a common factor there. This is x lots of x minus 3 and this is x lots of 1. So there's a common factor, so we can divide this by x to get 1 and this one by x to get 1. And there's also a common factor here of y. We've got 6 lots of y there and y lots of y minus 1 there. So we can divide this by y to get 1 and this y by y to get 1. And you're left with x minus 3 lots of y minus 1 over 6. And again, we could multiply out that bracket, so you might have got to multiply that bracket, but always try and leave answers factorised. So if you factorise the question, then often the answer will be factorised as well. So there you go, that's as, that's as far as that one's going to go. Um, there's all sorts of different versions you may have had, but maybe go back and try and do it this way. Always try and simplify your answers as far as possible. And finally, the last question. Again, there's things that we think we can do, but let's just see if we can factorise the numerators and the denominators as far as possible. So. Let's factorise that um, numerator and we get x minus 3, x plus 2. And if you can't factorise that quadratic, go and watch the video on factorising quadratics. And we've got 10x there, x squared there, and x minus 3 there, which I'm going to put in a bracket. Now we can look to see if there's common factors above and below the line. Well, we could have done that in before we factorise that because there's an x there, 5 lots of x, and there's 10 lots of x, lots of x there. So that can divide by x to make 1, and this can divide by x to make 1x. I'm just going to scrub that out, we'll make that x 10 to the 10 lots of x to the 1. Be careful when you scrub that out, there's an explanation of that in the previous video. But x squared has become x. I can also say, well, this x minus 3 and this x minus 3 can cancel because I can divide that by x minus 3 to get 1 and that by x minus 3 to get 1. And I'm left with 10x lots of x plus 2 over 5. Now, I've simplified the unknowns but what I forgot to do was simplify my numbers so I could have but so I always look at my answer and say have I simplified it fully because I s could have divided top and bottom by 5 here as well this numerator this numerator by 5 and this denominator by 5 but I picked it up at the final step because I can divide the denominator by 5 and the numerator by 5 and I'm left with 2 lot x lots of x plus 2 and that is as far as that can go. Although if you had multiplied it out, you would have got um, 2x squared plus 4x. Okay, 2x squared plus 4x. But I much prefer to leave my answers simplified into um, factorised form. So there are four questions. I can provide plenty more if you want to practice those. I've got a large sheet of those. Um, they're quite fun just to work through and make sure you can do them. And if you still find this difficult, then come and find me any lunchtime, either in the maths office or any of the maths classrooms, and I will give you some help on this.